The race to 5G is on, and the battle for talent is getting fierce. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, a podcast dedicated to helping you face the future workforce head on. Navigate this challenging talent landscape with innovative strategies to attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work, only here on 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, CEO of Broadstaff Talent Solutions. Thanks for joining me today on 5G Talent Talk. I'm Carrie Charles, your host, and uh, I have a fantastic episode in store for you. Uh, someone who I have an enormous respect for, Stacy Thompson. She is the Chief Operating Officer of ADB Companies. Stacy, thanks for joining me today. I'm so, so excited about this conversation. Thank you, Carrie. I, it's my pleasure to be here and chat with you today. So, Stacy, I really want to know about your, you know, your journey. How did you get to the seat that you're in today? Um, you know, life is an adventure and you just never know where it's going to take you. So, uh, you know, had you asked me if I was going to be here in 25 or 26 years, I probably would have rolled my eyes at you and said, no, I'll be on the beach somewhere selling coconuts. <laughs> so, um, you know, I started my career uh, with SBC at the time as an outside plant engineer. And I would like to say that's where the journey started, but really probably when I was in seventh grade, I opened this cake decorating and cookie company and my entrepreneurial spirit started then and, um, you know, had multiple jobs, waiting tables and being lifeguards and all throughout college. And so I would say the career and a lot of my key learnings were way back then. Um, I had an opportunity, my grandfather owned a telephone contract company and he did a lot of engineering and he paid really well. So when I was in the fifth, sixth, seventh grade, he would send me off with this orange wheel to measure off how, how far, uh, um, how much cable he needed to put in the ground. And so I would say that being fourth generation telephone somehow is just in my blood and has had a really big impact on my journey. So it's been a lot of fun. Wow. Um, you know, I, gosh, there's uh, there's so much talk about females in telecom, women in telecom, you know, how do we get more women in telecom? How do we promote them to leadership roles? Where are we falling short in your opinion? I mean, you've been in this industry a long time. So where do we, where are we falling short and maybe what can we do differently to attract more women and also retain more women and move them into leadership roles? So I would say over the last 26 years, I have seen a huge shift. I mean, I would say there is a really positive shift going on. Um, I started in outside plant when I was 22 years old and, um, you know, the next person age-wise to me was 30 years my senior. And, you know, I was the only girl in the office. It was it was a very challenging first job, but it taught me grit and it taught me how to um, ask a lot of questions and really get to know the people that I worked with. And so I would say from then to now, we, we've had a systematic change and shift. We just need to keep it going. And so I think it's so important to encourage young women, especially that they can do whatever they want and they're smart and to use their voice. And I will tell you a lot of my successes have been because I wasn't like the rest and I was willing to take a smart risk here or do something different or honestly just ask a lot of questions and figure out is there a better way. And so I think that diversity of thought is so important, especially as fast as this industry is changing these days with technology rolling that, um, you know, it's just really important to find those people. And so now as a female leader in this business, I am always looking for those sparks, those people. And I think it's really important to encourage them, push them, but also pull them. Look for those female leaders that you see that spark in. And, you know, you have a posse, you have a squad and you, you need to make sure that you're building that squad and pushing and pulling people appropriately. But most of all, encouraging people it's good to be different in this industry and to think about things differently. I love that. And you said um, 
you know, you're always looking at, is there a better way? Is there a better way? When you, you know, as a woman in a male dominated industry, or I, you know, I look at, I look at you and I say, okay, how, how'd you do it? Right. Um, how did you navigate your way to, to this C-level role that you're in now? Um, you know, what challenges do you overcome? I mean, we could talk about it forever, but I think if you could just tell, and you've said a couple of things so far, but if you could tell a woman who's listening, who wants to be sitting where you are someday, these are the three things that you really should focus on in order to make your way to a C-level role. Like, what would those be for you? Um, I would say, number one, listen and learn about the people and what is going on around you. Um, number two, be willing to take a risk and use your voice. That's that's really, really important. And then number three, um, just don't be afraid. No fear. You know, <laughs> uh, be willing to make a mistake and then just say, oh, that was not a good decision. And I'm going to learn from that. And I'm not going to do that again. It sounds kind of corny because that's kind of the cliche right now is be willing to make a mistake and but it's so true and I think the um, smart risk that you can take you know really stand out so when you are leading an organization and you see people that have that intensity that wake up every morning and say what am I going to do better today than I did yesterday and how can I have an impact on people that shows and I think that is really the key to um, success and growing as a leader. Hmm. I love that. I mean, that's, that fear thing is huge. I mean, I still have it. I have a, um, something behind me that says, let your faith be bigger than your fear because it still exists and I'm constantly dealing with it. I mean, we do no matter what age and no matter what success level we get to. So I think that's, uh, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm taking notes on everything you're saying right now. Um, so the other thing that just fascinates me about you is that you are a mother of four and how in the, I, I mean, how did you do it all, right? How did you manage all of that? Um, you know, we, as women, we look at, okay, how can we be successful in work and life, being a mom? Um, I mean, how old are your kids now again? They go from 20 to 30. So, okay. So, I mean, you, you had an entire successful career through all of that. So, so what are some tips that you can share? <laughs> so, first of all, I will say, I, I, I didn't do it all. I failed on both sides often. And, um, you know, I think really when people talk about work-life balance and how do you balance all of the family and the work and the career, I almost giggle because you, there is no balance. You kind of have to be a little bit crazy and <clears throat> I, priorities and where you're grounded. So you just have to know these are my priorities, no matter what. And here's what I'm grounded in every single day. And some days you may work 20 hours a day and some days you may be cleaning puke up off the floor or running kids to practice or, you know, traveling to an NCAA basketball tournament or, you know, I mean, it just really is about what is the priority at that time and about the people. And I think if you are invested in your people, I've got three, three daughters and one son, and they've taught me more about grit and perseverance than anyone else in the world has. And um, I, I just think if you really focus on people, whether it is in your family or whether it is at work or, and just know my priorities are around making sure I'm loving people well and having an impact, then that guides your day today. And some days you have to say, you know what, I'm going to fail at this over here today because you know, it's a priority for me to be at the music concert or, you know, so it's, it's a daily struggle. Um, it's really interesting now because, um, all my kids are graduated college and moving on and, you know, don't need me as much. So I get up in the morning and I'm used to getting four bodies ready and going. And, and now I just have to get myself ready. I look back on all that time. I'm like, how in the heck did you do that? And really, you do what you got to do, you know, that was a lot of mouths to feed and that's the practicality of it too. And so I would just encourage people just keep going. And you know what, if dishes are in the sink at night, everybody's healthy and everybody's moving forward. That I mean, that's the priority, right? And so um, I, I just think you have to choose wisely what's important and it, it all comes down to the people. Oh, I love that. And that's what makes you a phenomenal leader, but we'll talk about that more about that in a minute. The, you know, you spent 
26 years at AT AT&T? Was it 26? So what was this transition like from going from, you know, large company to, you know, to where you are now at ADB? I mean, what was this like? Any hurdles that you had to overcome? So it's funny, um, not hurdles, no. And I've preached my entire life and career about, you know, people embracing change and being able to roll with the punches and learning new things. And so I have been eating a lot of my own medicine lately, and it has been an amazing experience. It has been challenging too. No hurdles. It's just different. And so when you've worked somewhere for 26 years, even though I had about 18 jobs, different jobs in that 26 <laughs> years, um, you know, that's changed. And at and is so big that you know, it's amazing opportunity to learn so many things within one company. And so I did experience a lot of change there, but then, you know, leaving the fold, I would say, and and coming to ADB has been an adventure for sure. And just learning how people operate and the reason they think about things a little bit differently. And I've known ADB for a really long time when I was in the outside plant world, I had a relationship with them they were a vendor for me. And we had a couple of big catastrophe, like the Joplin tornado happened and we were partnered really well um, and worked together. And so I've known these guys for a long time, but then being inside the company and learning from them and understanding why they make the decisions they do and has been absolutely fascinating. I'm enjoying learning and understanding what makes this company successful. And I'm looking at it as an adventure, no hurdles for sure, no roadblocks, no, it's just different in embracing the difference and then trying to take what I've learned through my career and then work with the team and apply some of those things has actually been really fun. I'm having a great time. Love it. Adventure. And there's a lot of people right now that are looking at what's their next adventure. So that's a beautiful, beautiful way to, uh, to frame it. So what would you say in your opinion, Stacey, are let's like the current industry conditions? What are we looking at for 2024? You know, we've got the bead funding coming. Anything that leaders need to be doing now to prepare for what's next? Well, leaders always need to be preparing for what's next. And this industry is ever changing. You know, I started in 1997 and who would have thought that all of the craziness would happen? I mean, what a pivotal time for technology and for telecommunications. And I mean, just think about all of the iterations of mobility and fiber and the importance of being connected. I mean, everything we do now is through a connection, whether that's through your phone or your computer and business and impersonal. And so this industry has just exploded. It's so exciting and it's a great place to be. Obviously there's ups and downs and, you know, this was a tough year The 2023 was a very challenging year for a lot and uh, people just because of the economy. So I would say it's so important for leaders to understand how the economy is impacting this industry and why companies are making decisions the way they are. I also think um, going through COVID, you know, that was a huge focus on we need to be connected because everybody needs connections. And if you've got to do school from home or work from home or how is that going to happen? And so now we've got bead funding coming to make sure that underserved and unserved families have connections so that they can connect to school and work. And so I just think it's really exciting and you got to be curious. You have to constantly be learning and you have, you have to have a network of people that understands here's what's going on. Here's what's impacting the industry. Um, the other thing that's changing is, you know, we've got the big three carriers and the tier two providers, and there's a lot of other people getting into this industry right now. And a lot of business building private networks so that they have private connections. And so I think just being sure that you're curious and knowing what is going on in the world that's impacting the industry is probably the the biggest place you need to be studying and making sure that you're understanding what's going on. I agree with you so much. Um, I uh, I recently renewed my subscription to the Wall Street Journal and I get up every morning and it's now part of what I do, right? I read, I read about you know, what's happening globally and the economics. And I just, I want to know, and I want to know how it's going to affect our industry. And so, I mean, I just think you're spot on because we, we need to understand that we can't live in our little bubble. We really have to understand how all the pieces connect and affect each other. 
So I uh, agree 100%. Let's now tell the ADB story. Who is ADB? What do you do? Who do you do it for? Uh, just, just let's, let's hear. ADB is an amazing company. It is actually grown quite a bit over the last five years. It is a turnkey provider. So they do a lot of line with business. They do um, fiber, wireless, a lot in technology and engineering. And so it, it's interesting to see how all of those li different lines of business interact. You know, one of the amazing parts of my career journey is I've been able to work across the country with all kinds of people, the diversity of, you know, I'm digging a trench to place this fiber in versus I'm engineering a wireless network or a Wi-Fi network to make sure everybody has connections, you know? And so I think ADB encompasses all of that. There's all different kinds of people in the company. Um, I love ADB's focus on people. I'm all about the people because in the end, that's why we're here, you know? And so ADB has a very specific mission that actually they start every meeting with, which I thought was a little weird when I first got here, but that mission basically embodies what ADB's goal is every day. And that's to be a customer centric partner providing innovative solutions. But the really cool part about the mission is um, it talks about that the growth, safety, and well-being of the team members as the benchmarks of the success. And so I think the word benchmark is really important in that because without the people, you can make things happen. And so kicking off every meeting with that really does kind of get people's mind around, hey, what's important here? The customer's important. Being innovative and taking some smart risk and unique, I think, is important. But most of all, the team members and the people making sure they're safe, their well-being, and the, there's career growth. And so I think that's really special, especially in a construction industry. You know, those softer skills aren't always the things that uh, are accentuated in construction. And so it, I think it's a, a unique place. And I think the company is seen huge successes because of that. Yes, no, I, I agree. I've, I've heard that as well. Let's talk a little bit more about your company culture at ADB. How do you, you know, any specific strategies that you use to engage and retain team members that's yeah, working? So I, I think ADB has grown so much over the last several years. So there's about 1,500 employees and I think, and nationally, right? So it used to just be based in the St. Louis greater area, and now it's grown nationally. We're actually coast to coast now, so that's pretty exciting. ADB's focus on bringing people in, onboarding them, making sure that they understand here's, you know, the priorities with the company, not just from a productivity and efficiency standpoint, but also from a people standpoint too. And I, I think that's really important. I think people see that and embrace it. I think the vision is really important. Chad Johnson is the CEO and every year he writes a vision statement. That vision statement is looking out three to five years at the vision for the company. And it's a really cool thing that he does every year and he reads it to everyone and what that vision looks like. And, and then each of the leaders create that vision as well for their team. And so I think as long as you have a grounding in people, and making sure you're caring for the people and you've got a really strong vision. I, I think those two things combined are really cool. Over the last several years, they've grown the wireless industry quite a bit. They started as American Directional Boring and then were basically focused on boring and placement of cables and have grown. They do industry they do a lot in telecommunications as well as in power and infrastructure and any kind of infrastructure inside data centers, those kinds of things. But I, I think the basic concept is the same as, you know, how can we be innovative, do this the most efficiently with the right people in place? And so I, I think making sure that every leader understands that is really important. Yes. And, and every leader all the way, you know, at, at every level, right? Because people don't leave companies, they leave managers. That's what we've always heard. So as long as that is aligned through all the levels of leadership, um, I think that's important. So is uh, how do you handle diversity in your organization or how do you maintain it? Is, you know, I know it's very challenging, especially in construction. 
It, it actually is. And depending on where you are in the country, it's even more challenging. And so I would say yeah. the HR team and the recruiting team at ADB is very focused. They've got partnerships with a lot of different organizations that really focus on how do we get diverse candidates in the door just to interview, quite honestly, and making sure that we're tapping into each of those areas. And then once they get in the door, you know, ADB has culture pillars that we focus on, whether that's community or safety or health. And so making sure that we're engaging, have employee resource groups for those people that are coming in. And really, we talk about diversity a lot, and it's it can mean so many different things. Diversity of thought, diversity of skills, diversity of ethnicity, they're, you know, male, female, there's all kinds of things. But I think also that inclusion and making sure that you're listening and seeing people for them, see see them, listen to them, and making sure that you're including their contributions as part of the solution, I think is really critical. I think ADB does a really good job of that. So Stacey, I've heard really wonderful things about you as a leader. And before I ever met you, which I, I was really looking forward to, to interviewing you on the show, and for a long time, I'm so glad we're here, but uh, describe your you know, who are you as a leader? What what are your core principles that guide you? It's a very interesting question because I think that that has morphed over time. And so I would say, I think, and I feel like I'm repeating myself, loving people well is, is really critical. I think I have a couple, I like math, I like numbers. And so um, I have a couple of things that I live by and that is, the rule of 10. So, you know, when you get, when something happens or an event happens, you have to apply the rule of 10. Like how much energy and stress can you put into that? So if it's going to not matter in 10 seconds or 10 minutes or even 10 hours, maybe even 10 days, you know, if it's going to matter in 10 weeks, yeah, we probably need to pay a little bit of attention. If it's going to matter in 10 months, you know, and so rule of 10 is very important. I think it just kind of grounds you in level sets. Okay. How important is this issue and how much time do I need to invest in it? Um, I always talk to the teams about brevity as a gift too. And I think the rule of three to five is really important. So whether you're presenting or whether you're talking to your team or setting goals or any three to five is the sweet spot. So I always say three to five slides, three to five bullets, three to five words, because if you're doing 20 things, you're not going to do any of them well. So pick the top three to five that you can really excel at and what your point is that you're wanting to get across. And so Communicate, communicate, communicate. None of us can communicate enough. Um, and how we're communicating, you have to really be creative, I think, because, you know, some people don't listen. Some people don't read. Some people, you know, so you have to be really creative in making sure that you're thinking about how am I going to communicate to the guy who's climbing the tower every day or the RF engineer that's sitting in his desk or, you know, and when you have a very diverse group of people that you're leading, it's so important that you think about all of those different things when you're going through the day-to-day -day because you can assume, well, I told them that three times, but it may not have reached the audience that you were looking for. So, I mean, I think that's really important. I think big goals are important. I think setting clear directions. So stretching people out of their comfort zone, setting high expectations, but loving them through that and encouraging them is really, really important. And so, um, we spend a ton of time at work and with our teams and with our people. And I think it's really important. Big goals are really important, but we got to have a lot of fun while we're doing it too. And so I think making sure that people are aligned, understand expectations, understand their role in the bigger picture and how they're going to impact things, but also making sure that you're having some fun along the way. That's super critical and um, important to me because I work a lot. And so I want to have fun while we're doing it. So, yes. Amen. So do I, so do I, I love that. So this is actually my favorite part of this interview. And I, I've, I've just been so excited since the second I got on the call with you today and you told me something that is going to be announced soon, but, um, I want to talk about the, you know, ask you about the ADB vision and where are you going, but within that, can you please, I don't know if you can, but can you, um, share the announcement that's coming up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't mean so to put you ADB on the spot. <laughs> has a huge vision, and I'm super honored to be part of this team and leading this team. So, 
Um, I think that you're referencing effective February 1st. I'm going to um, get to be CEO. So that's super exciting. And I'm <laughs> pumped about that. I have all the emotions. I'm really pumped and excited and ready to run fast. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? So just know that all the natural feelings are happening right now. But ADB has an amazing vision of being a huge part in this industry and um, and growing the company. I mean, I, I think that the vision that we have is being a big partner for a lot of our customers, making sure that we understand what our customers need, delivering on those needs, timely quality, and that focus, I think, has gotten ADB where it is today. And the industry is just an exciting place to be. It's booming. It's you know, the bead money coming and introducing billions more dollars into the already, you know, huge infrastructure of connecting people and building um, data traffic is growing every day as we do things, as technology continues to evolve AI and, you know, all of those things, that data is just going to become bigger and more robust. And what is the network that has to support that? And I am super pumped to lead this amazing team and be part of that, you know, ADB joined forces with Warren Equity Partners. And it is actually, I, that was one of the things I was a little bit nervous about coming to ADB was being part of that um, private equity world. But I will tell you what, they have been an amazing partner through all of this. They're great sounding board. I think they want to grow and grow healthy. And so I think that's really, really important. And so as we grow, partnering with Warren and amazing mentors, I mean, Chad Johnson is awesome and he's going to go to a board seat and I'm super excited that I get to have him as a mentor. And then Rusty Keeley, you know, he started the company and he he's still around a little bit. And so having those people around, I'm, I'm thankful for and honored that we get to take off and run and be part of this industry. It's a great place to be. Wow. Stacey, congratulations. Well-deserved. You are one of the most inspiring people that I know. So I, I am just, just absolutely thrilled about, about this promotion. Thank you. You're very sweet. I, I'm sure that there are people listening to this episode right now thinking, how can I work for ADB? I want to be part of this. It sounds like an awesome company, awesome leaders, lots of you know exciting things happening in the future, great vision, everything. So where can we find out more about ADB and also possibly some open jobs? Yeah, so um, ADB has a website, of course, and it's adbcompanies.com. And then um, LinkedIn, obviously, is very popular these days. So jump on LinkedIn and ADB and connect with me and ADB and all the things. We post all of our jobs on uh, LinkedIn as well as on the website and, and all the other areas to post jobs. So yeah, we're always looking for awesome people who are ready to run fast and have a lot of fun. So um, I appreciate the time today, Carrie. This has been a lot okay. of fun and um, it's great to get to know you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. I'm sure that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be great friends. I'm, uh, I'm excited. So thanks for being on the show. It's my honor. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time today. Take care. Thank you for listening to another informative episode of 5G Talent Talk brought to you by RCR Wireless News, Telecom Careers, and Broadstaff Talent Solutions. As we advance into the future, we promise to bring you the resources you need to navigate this ever-changing landscape of 5G to help you attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. To access the show notes or leave a review, visit broadstaffglobal.com. Until next time.